and welcome back to another lecture of our Swift UI Crash Course series. So in this video, we'll be talking about for each modifier. So if you are familiar with this UI kit or any other programming languages, you might have already used for each uh, for iterating through the elements inside the array or any other collection. Similarly, in Swift UI, for each is like a tool that helps you make a list of things in your app. So you give it a bunch of items and it creates a view for each item automatically. So let's say I have a text here and I want to show the text five times. Okay. So one way is just by adding five text inside the VStack. So when we do it, you will see that in the canvas, we have five text inside the VStack. So you can see we have the same text view and we are writing the code five times to get this thing done. Instead, what we can do is add a for each loop and inside the for each, you see that it takes a range and a content. So let's give it a range of zero to let's say six, less than six. And in the content, we can just type the text that we want to show five times. And you will see that the text has created and instead of writing the five, six duplicate line of course, we just did it in two lines by using the for each view modifier. So the, this for each is super handy when you want to show a bunch of stuff without making each one by one. All right. So this is one way like you, we directly passed the range and the view that we want to show and it created the view. Let's say we have an array, an array of fruits and it has some elements like we have apple, we have banana, we have oranges and last mango. Now let's say I want to display this fruits name inside the text. So for this, what we can do is let's just try to remove this code and do it again. So I'll again add a for each. So let's pass the data. So here for the data, I'll pass fruits and for the content we'll pass. This shouldn't be an integer. It should be a string. I think it will auto correct it. So let's say fruit and inside the text, we'll just pass the fruit. Uh, you'll see that the for each statement throwing an arrow reference uh, on for each requires that string conforms to identifiable so for each needs an id to for every element so that it can uniquely identify the element so for this what we can do is we can pass the id here and for this id we can pass dot self so in Swift UI, when we are using constructors like for each, we often need to provide a way for Swift UI to uniquely identify each element. So this is important for efficient updates and animations when the data changes. And dot self syntax is a concise way to say that use this item itself as its own identifier. So this way it can uniquely dis distinguish between all the other elements of the fruits collection. Let's say we have our structure now, a structure of fruits. All right. And inside this, we will just take a name, which will be of string type. And inside this fruits, we will try to store the fruits structure. And here we will pass apple, mango, banana. So we created a fruits array, which takes fruits structure as an element. Here we can type fruit dot name. So it's still working fine. You'll see that we are getting an error now that the for each require the fruits to conform to hashable. So we need to provide structure with a hashable protocol so that it can be used as a unique identifier. So once we provide it hashable protocol, uh, the Swift UI will be able to use it as a identifier as it will hash the element and store it as an identifier. 
other ways by creating our own unique id so we are saying that uh, all our fruits will have a unique uuid and now we can use this id as the unique identifier once we declare this id we don't need to provide hashable protocol so one way is by using dot self and the other way is by creating our own unique element and then using it for the id third way is directly using the identifiable protocol so when we use identifiable protocol it will automatically for each will automatically know that it has a id variable which can be used for this id so when we provide this identifiable protocol we don't need to explicitly provide this id here so you see that we remove this for, uh, id from here for inside the, from inside the for each and the code is still working fine so these are some of the ways to use for each inside your views i just uh, created a text but you can do much more like uh, earlier in previous videos we created an initializer view so let's say here also we create we use the initializer view and inside the title we will be passing fruit dot name if you are unfamiliar with this initializer view you can just go to the previous lecture inside this we created this initializer view so you can see that how easily i created four initializer views with different titles by just using the for each a view modifier right so i hope you understood the concept of for each and in upcoming lectures we will be also discussing scroll views and uh, list and many more things so if you haven't understood or if you have a confusion in anything then you can just comment it and uh, i'll be happy to help right all right so that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in next one thank you